you're about to do a honey tasting. Yeah, you know, actually, right there. No, I'm gonna do my best thinking. <laughs> All right, Brian, Brian, read it. Who's this? It's really It's like it's the meeting of the true minds. Charlie's got a healthy taste. He's like, I'm not good. I'm not good. I'm not good. Right? That's good. Hey, y'all, come over here. Look at this. Look at this. Jason got over here. Look at this, everybody. This, in my opinion, is the best one. Yes, sir. I didn't do it. Right? I put it in this bag, seal it in this container, hanging, right? Drill a hole in the bottom down here, buy a steamer, steamer yeah. right? 100 bucks, oh, maybe nice. 80 bucks. Plug it, plug it in the back, take it, put it on a tilt, right? I'm not going to tilt it because I'm pouring the breaking juice out, right? And then I take the uh, standard pan down here, the heat, right? 10 bucks, 20 bucks, I don't know what is it, at Walmart. Mm -hmm. And then literally turn it on, it steams everything, cleans everything, filters everything, drips out, I put water in the pan. It drips in there, it solidifies. Yep, pour your cake off. Yep, and then I get a brick. And if I put it in the pan or I put it in the bucket, I'll get basically that. clean wax. Nice. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe I see a dozen of them flying around the house. Woo! I, I took <laughs> off. Oh, interesting. What's that? So, if you want to look up in there, I'll pull a couple out. Just pull the next one. There we go. Go ahead, stick your head down in there, Greg. Smells so good. It's super neat. I've never seen anything like that. I can pull another one if you need to see it. That one, uh, I think I moved this one down. Um, here, let me take you put them up here real quick. It has better. Uh, they don't don't especially when you put a starter strip in. They help. It helps them. The gas is not. When you see something like this, here we are worried about bee space and what size <laughs> box and medium or deep or five or eight or ten. Yeah. Meanwhile, bees are doing what they do in soffits and fenders and yes. yeah. apparently spaceships too. Yeah, that's right. Space this, exactly. this right here is almost like this could be. <laughs> Susie's rocket oh, ship no, one point oh. no. Brian, she's gonna tan you. <laughs> well, you tell you what, you got your truck. Here. So nice. that is my answer to not being able to cut out a hive that's in a tree. Yeah. And awesome. allowing it to still build. Now, granted, I've got to eventually cut it out because it's not removable yeah. frames. But I love looking at look at the propolis. That's beautiful. Yeah. I mean, this was a cut that they cut it and they got yeah. it and they've now since propolized it. That's cool. And the front, if you look down in there, that's they were Seriously. the whole log in there? Seriously, the whole tree. The whole tree. Or the log with the tree in it. Wow, that's a nice one. It's a pretty girl. Mm -hmm. Of course, look at the small hobby. Look there. how dark your drones are. Mm -hmm. Hang on one second. Let me get these small high beetles. There we go. Yeah, she's nice. Right there in the middle. Yep. I mark my drones, too. You mark drones? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mark drones like crazy. I just get like an, op an opposite pen. I'm in the... The man right here, Quick guys. Program the doing man. Over State. Mm. Ricky says that For don't believe him. He's the man. <laughs> That's beautiful. Yeah, she's. Oh, we, right. we are we are behind the scenes, behind the scenes, behind the scenes with Sawmill Charlie. Taking a video of a video of the a video of a video wow. of his video, yep. hey, hey, and it'll uh, be in my video. You know, hey, babe, what do you say, Jason? I, you know, I say, uh, this is great. Just yeah. hanging out and video. talking it's to awesome. you. It is That's awesome. It. Uh, here we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. I'm amazed by the faces that are actually here. Ready? Yeah, it's cool. You, know, you pulled uh, a quick Greg one, Brown, man. His knife 
to the bee party. Uh, Greg, finish your knife. And I brought my little bitty knife to the party. And uh, I Gunner, my... uh, you know, <laughs> some people say size doesn't matter. Yeah. So, wait, okay, so well, I'm has to, I was waiting. I thought well, you were setting me up for a you call that a knife. You were going to pull out a big old Preston, uh, North Carolina uh, Bowie yeah. knife and put us all to shame. Yeah. As hillbillies, you know, we don't have those big old knives. No. Nope. Uh. <laughs> He doesn't be like Crocodile Dundee and be like, that's not a knife. That's not a knife. So when they come out and they do their pleasure tonight, they're cooking them right when you're all standing over there. And I'll take them and I'll fill them with honey, or I might give an option not to fill them with honey, but it's basically natural cum. And the it's other, still pretty clear for this time of year, the too. The difference isn't it? that I did, yeah, well, they, they've been filling them for a little while. It's been a, a while, but they're. Okay. The difference between what I did this year and last year is I did not put wax on the bottom. Oh, yeah. A lot of people said you have to put starter wax in Doesn't look like that. it. Completely clean Look jars. how pretty it is when you can actually see the, exactly. the branching. That's neat. Jason is giving an educational well, something or another It's not an right educational. Now. It's just something it's that works for me. This right here. So, Mike Berry, if you were watching, this is not a how-to. This, this is how you do it. This is this how in front of you. Everybody you right here, this is how to use something. I don't know what it is. He's going to tell us. I'm glad you asked the question, Greg. I'm glad you have an answer. Because these are called slatted racks. Slatted racks. Slatted racks. Hmm. Okay. So what are slatted racks? Uh, in a traditional hive setup, most people who use a solid or screen bottom board. When using a screen bottom board, you can imagine that airflow can cup up underneath and push air on the bottoms of those frames, which forces the bees to essentially, or the queen, to not want to lay brood where that fluctuation can exist and she won't lay all the way down to the bottom of those frames. So if this sat on the bottom board down here an inch lower, it would actually sit right above the screen and that would create that situation. So you put in something called a slatted rack. What a slatted rack is, it allows you to lift them up off the frame, the screen bottom board. When your frames are going in, it sits directly above that. And so that gives that benefit for the queen to actually lay lower on the frames. However, there's another purpose. As you can imagine, as the foragers are coming in, They've got to pass off the honey of the nectar. They pass it off right under this bridge and to the ones that will transport the honey up to the, the honey, to where it needs to be stored in the honey super. It also gives a place for the foragers during the evening or on days when they can't forage to hang out. So they're not hanging out in the brood's nest, which ultimately gives the ability for that proliferation of that queen pheromone to continue to go through the brood's nest and it's not clogged up with all the foragers so they are less swarmy. It doesn't prevent swarms, they're less swarmy, which means they have a little bit better proliferation of those queen pheromones to say, hey, we're good to go. We don't need to swarm, we don't need a new queen, we don't need to make a new queen cell, we don't need to make a swarm cell, we have plenty of room because they all can hang out underneath the bridges of this slatter rack. In the winter time, as you get that wind that comes across, it has that front block here as well that allows the wind to be stopped from going up under the frames as well. Again, it's really multi-purpose, and I use them on, as you can see, my deeps, my five frames, my 10 frames. I pretty much use them on every hive that I can put it on because I believe that for a couple bucks, 10, 20 bucks, it helps with a lot of variation. That's the explanation, at least. Whether they are 100% needed, it's another piece of equipment. So, you gotta make that decision. So now we know. There you go. That's what a slider rack is. How to use a slider rack. It's right. the remote learning yard. This, uh, Everywhere he goes, he's always teaching. Yes. It doesn't matter where he's at. He's in Warwick, Maryland. He could be in Ohio, but he's teaching. Yeah. Remote learning, ladies and gentlemen, right there. That is uh, Greg Burns at his best. All right, everybody. We are unloading the... Uh, we have Mr. Ricky and donuts. That's why. Donuts. That's why I came to unload this. I thought it was a There's, trunk. It was a donut chest. It's a it's a donut chest. Wow. You know I would pull my knife out and cut this, but uh, Greg, if you don't mind. I mean. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That is stunning. So now we're gonna let Mr. Uh, Ricky horizontal. Yeah, so uh, Jason called me up and said, hey man, I want a queen castle and I want to be able to raise some queens and um, he uh, he said he'd like to have a painting on the front because that does help your bees locate your holes and uh, then he wanted a viewing window in the back of his, which is 
on the other side. There we go. A little oh, window. Wow. Very nice. That way he can see his bees. And then, so. Take a look inside? Yeah, let's open it up and look inside. Wow. So you know, some of you get, no, it'll, it'll hold itself. Hold yeah, itself. yeah, it'll hold itself. And uh, some of you guys have awesome. seen Greg's hive. But it's kind of similar to that, but you can do 12, ke 12 queens. <laughs> you can do six nukes. You can do uh, three hives. You can go down to two hives or even one main hive. Anybody out there, I'm, I, I just say, if you get a chance to build your horizontal hive, it's a great resource. I mean, you can plug you know your brood frames out or get you some honey out and it's just like that there's no breaking mm -hmm. the hives down so it's, it's a lot of fun mm -hmm. <laughs> and then you know i'd love to get some insight on how you would treat a horizontal hive and i just happen to have an expert here flown in just for this moment oh there right, look yeah expert, mr. Rob. mr rob mr rob yeah so yeah. tell us how you would treat a horizontal hive versus another hive in, in any, any so I mean it, it depends with the horizontal hives it depends how you have them compartmentalized you know what size but you treat them essentially just like nukes or double deeps or you know however many spaces you have you just kind of count your frames act like they're in boxes okay. and you know the hardest part is going to be getting your holes and all that stuff but clearly you'll have entrances you can treat through you know that kind of thing so I've heard of people drilling holes in them. I've heard of people just shooting through, yeah. you know, the, you the drill, portal can you, holes. Can I say, can you treat Generally you speaking, discs? yeah, I mean, that, that's normally what people do. The, okay. the normal thing is they're, they're thicker than normal if yeah. memory serve. So some of the stems aren't long enough to get through. So most of them like the right. portal because it's a bigger, um, bigger orifice or whatever to get through. So it's not going to, you know clog up or anything right. like that with it um, yeah i've got one of rob's uh um vaporizers and you know i'm in a, in a normal horizontal hive of course it's got different compartments you know i'm just going to locate that brood nest i'm going to put me a divider board and i want to hit that brood nest heavy i'm just going to tap me a hole through it and, and okay. use the vaporizer it works great on a horizontal hive Definitely. To see everybody come out from all over. I mean, we've got everybody. PA representing New Jersey. We got North Carolina representing Ohio. The, the first annual BBQ. Yeah. First yeah. Annual. What are we doing? I don't know. Huh? That's probably how you eat crab too. The the, the wrap it up. Yeah. You gonna wrap it up? Are we wrapping it up. We're wrapping it up. The first annual wrapping it BBQ up. is being wrap, wrapped up. I'm getting the wrap the wrap up. It's the wrap up. Is it wrapped up? I think it's just about wrapped up. Wrapped up? I mean, we had a, a fun day. Jason, thanks for uh, inviting us all out. Got to break bread and talk bees and uh, see what you got going on here. Mm -hmm. See your, your beautiful farm and got to see Rick give up. you a, bring that horizontal hive. And mm -hmm. you know, what more could you ask for today? Yeah. If you need it's to get a wrap-up built, you it's always wrapped up. ask Greg. He would just ask he Greg. he will give the best wrap-up out of every wrap-up. If Jose was here, we, we, he would just do that, what's that, cut? Yeah, yeah he'd be... How's it going? Hold on. Okay. Uh, y'all...